Okay, if you have your Bibles, turn again with me to the book of Revelation. This time, chapter 4. I want to read the first four verses of chapter 4. Revelation, chapter 4. After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as if, if it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the spirit, behold, the throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. And he that sat was to look upon like jasper and sardine stone, and there was a rainbow round about the throne in sight like unto an emerald. And around about the throne were four and twenty seats, and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. Almighty God, how we thank you and how we praise you for this opportunity to be in your house again tonight. So many churches today have stopped having services on Sunday night. I praise God that we still do that. And I hope and pray that we never come to the place where we say, well, it's just uh, too hard to go or no one else is doing it or what have you. Help us to stay with it. Help us to be like the church at Ephesus, to keep on keeping on and hold on and, and do what you have called us to do. And I thank you, Lord God, that we can come together to sing praises under your name and to worship you in spirit and in truth. Now, Father, as we look at this passage of Scripture, and John now has an open door, you see, right into heaven. And so, <coughs> help us to understand what's going to take place at this particular time. In Jesus' precious holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, you know, the church age ends at the rapture of the church. Right. At the midnight cry, Jesus will come for his own. He'll come for his bride. Those who are saved, those who know the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior will be transformed with glorified bodies caught up in the air to meet with the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, those whose bodies are in the ground, they'll be raised up from whatever, from wherever and uh, to meet their heavenly spirits with the Lord in the air. The Bible calls this a blessed hope. It is a blessed hope, and we need to be ready for that. You know, as we look at the rapture, and by the way, let me just say this to you, beginning now from, from here on, you hear no more about the church, because the church is going to be gone. The church is going to be taken out, taken up in the glory. Now, as we look at the rapture, though, there are four things I'll ask you. What, who, when, and why? Uh, to start with, though, we need to understand, I think, what the, the sacred mystery of the rapture is all about. Now, you understand, don't you, uh, that there, the Lord is going to come. First of all, he's going to come in the air, and he'll come back for his church, for his people. We'll be caught up to be with him in the air, and then we'll be taken with him uh, into glory. Uh, and, of course, uh, several things will take place, and we'll be looking at that in days to come. But... Uh, then he's going to come again, and he's going to come then to this earth and live upon this earth for a thousand years. So there's two, actually there's two commons, but uh, uh, only one when he comes to this earth. So as we look at this, we want to understand what this is all about. And I pray that we get just maybe a, uh, you know, a little look as we study God's Word to find out what it's really going to take. Now, here's the thing about it. Uh, this mystery, you know, you cannot understand it apart from God. 
It can only be understood when you trust the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, invite Him to come in your heart and life and let Him take control of your life. It is then that you begin to understand what the Apostle Paul was talking about. Paul said, listen, I am telling you a mystery. Ever have anyone tell you a mystery? I'm telling you a mystery. We're not all... We are not all going to fall asleep. But we will be changed in a moment, in the twinkle of an eye or in the blink of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound and the dead in Christ will be raised up incorruptible. And we will be changed. For this corruptible body that I have <laughs> must be clothed with that which is incorruptible. And the mortal must take on, you know, immortality. Ah, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 through 53, you can read that. And I pray that it will speak to your heart. John was caught up into heaven and he heard a voice that said, I want to show you what's going to take place after all of this. There was a door opened in heaven and John is permitted to go to see and to find out what's going to take place. 1 Thessalonians 4.13 says, we, don't, we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers. God doesn't want us to be uninformed. He wants us to know. He, this, this book, the book of Revelation, is not some kind of hidden book. It is an unveiling of what's going to take place. It says, I don't want you to be un uninformed, brothers, concerning those who are asleep, so that you will not be given uh, uh, like the rest who have no hope. So, by the way, sooner or later, and most of you probably have already been there, sooner or later, most of us will go to the graveside and we'll say goodbye to, to a loved one to a person that we know who has given their heart and life to the Lord Jesus Christ and they've gone on to glory. What? Uh, so we don't have to be without hope. You, you, listen, I, um, in one year's time, I, I buried my mother and two brothers. In one year's time. But one day, you know, one day, I pray that, and, and I know exactly what hillside they were on. I know where the graveyard's at, you know, and all that. I won't be there, but I'll be caught up to be with them in the air. What a glorious thing that would be. But we have this hope. We have this hope. You know, uh, 1 Thessalonians 4, 14, 15 gives us the promise since we believe that Jesus died, and rose again in the same way God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep through Jesus. We say this to you by the revelation from our Lord. We who are alive at the Lord's coming will have no advantage whatsoever over those who have fallen asleep. Um, granted, it would be tremendous if you were alive when the Lord came. I think all of us would pray that. That we want to be alive and the Lord Jesus Christ comes again. But we have no advantage whatsoever over those who have been put out there in the grave. Because they're going to be brought forth out of the grave. And we'll be all caught up together to be with them in the air. Now God's word teaches us that when we <clears throat> are when the rapture occurs, the body of the believer will be wakened from its resting place. And will be reunited with his spirit. That is with the Lord, you know. Uh, by the way, uh, your body, I want to make sure I get this right. Your body will sin from the earth and your spirit will descend from heaven. And they'll come together when the Lord Jesus Christ comes back Amen. for his love. 
Now that ought to make every one of us shout. Praise God. You know, <laughs> we have this wonderful, precious promise of His return. The Lord Himself will descend from heaven with a shout and the voice of an archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Every time I go to Brandon, I go down by, I take a little shortcut up there at the, a little church off of 301 and go over and mm -hmm. up Providence. And if you do, you go right almost through the uh, cemetery there. And I've often thought, boy, I'm driving down that, uh, that stretch of road. Wouldn't it be something all them graves just started bursting open? <laughs> oh! Glory, right? Amen. Praise Amen. God. You know, this is going to take place. Do you believe that? Amen. Yes, it's going to happen. And we need to be, we need, <laughs> we need to be prepared and we need to live as if it's going to take place tomorrow, you see. Jesus is going to come and those who are alive will be then caught up to be with him in the air or in the clouds, it says, to meet with the Lord in the air. And so we will always be together with the Lord. What a wonderful, glorious thing it'll be. I don't know about you, but I'm sure you have loved ones that have gone on before, and one day you'll be with them. You talk about a reunion. I've been to a lot of these church reunions, you know, they have it, and it's great to come back together, and everybody comes and praises God and <clears throat> what have you. Hmm. By the way, that phrase, caught up, means to be seized away or caught away. Yep. And that's what will happen. One day, one day, the Father will say, Son, it's time. Now, Jesus said the only person that really knows when this is going to happen is the Father. And one day, the Father is going to say to the Son, Listen, it's time. Now, you go get your bride. And the trumpet will sound, and Jesus will step down from his throne. And with a voice that will be heard throughout the graves, <laughs> tombs, under the sea, wherever it might be. You know, miraculously, those who know the Lord will have their ears. You say, how are they going to be listening if they're dead out there? But I'm telling you, God can do anything. <laughs> But they're going to have the ears tuned, you know, to the Spirit. And the Spirit will descend from heaven. And they'll be resurrected from the grave. What a tremendous saying, you know. In 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, 17, we have this promise again of the Lord's return. That He will descend from heaven. He'll come back to get His church. You, me, and all of those who have accepted him as our personal Savior, you see. <laughs> well, here's the thing about it. Those who have their ears uh, tuned to meet him, they'll be caught up to be with him in the air. Now, I, you know, down through these years, I've had people ask me all kind of questions. You know. What about the person who is uh, buried at sea? Well, don't you think God who created the sea and all that knows where that where he's at? Huh? How about the guy out there in the middle of the desert? He knows where it's at. In the battlefield. Country grave yard. In the city. Wherever it might be. You see, you no. Know, I don't know where you know this. And I just, when I was researching this, I, you know, you find out some things when you're working on sermons that you didn't know. <laughs> but if you really sprinkle silver, gold, zinc, and copper, and iron on the ground, and then got one of these big uh, uh, electromagnetic, I don't know what they're called, but you know, and you, you just move that over. There's only one of those elements that'll be caught up to be on that magnet. No. You know what, Dad? Iron. Iron, why? Because, <laughs> you know what? 
The gold, the silver, the gold, the zinc, and copper all stay on the ground. But the iron will rise up. Why? Because it's the same nature as a magnet. That's why. When Jesus comes back to this earth, those who are heaven born will be heaven bound. That's right. A lot of people think, you know, well, yeah, hey, I'm on my way to heaven. The reason they think it is because they sing, you know, the song, I'm going to heaven when I die. Glory, glory, by and by and all that. Well, no. You've got to be like the iron. You've got to be born again. You've got to know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Someone will say to me, you know, every so often, you really believe in the rapture? Amen. Amen. I believe it. I believe it. I, because I've told you a hundred times before that I believe the Word of God. Amen. And the Word of God has a lot to say about the rapture. It's gospel truth. The death, the burial, the resurrection. All of this, of course, is something that you and I need to give some serious attention to. Now, what, what, here's the thing about it. What should we do, or how should we live in the light of the countdown? The fact that he's coming. You believe he's coming? Amen. Absolutely. Well, then how should we live knowing that he's coming? He could be tonight. Praise the Lord. Could be next week. I don't know. He but here's the thing back. about it, dear friend. Each day is going to bring us a little closer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It'll either bring you closer to his coming again while you're alive or his return when you're out there in the grave. One of the two, you see. The clock never stops ticking. And time just simply moves on. It, it, when you stop to think about this, it should bring an urgency to your life. That we'd want to do more for the Lord. That we'd want to, you know, serve Him more, give more, do all of these things for Him. Because it's going to happen. Now another thing that I'm asked over and over again, how about all these signs? Well, I've said this to you before, I'm going to say it to you again. Don't worry about the sign. Worry about His coming. That's right. If you're ready for his coming, you won't have to worry about the sign. But there are some signs that we need to give a little serious thought to. You know, first of all, wars and rumors of wars. Now, there's always been wars. And there's always been rumors of wars. But I think more so now than ever before. Seems to me that the whole world is aflame. Uh, you know. Jesus said it'd be like it in the days of Noah. What were they doing in the days of Noah? You remember what? They were getting married. They were getting divorced. <laughs> they were doing all kinds of things. And well, great day. Wickedness abounded. When you, when you read about the days of Noah, it sounds just like today. So that, that you know... You have to say, well, another thing that I, uh, I know probably some of these diseases have been around for a long time, but it seems to me like about every year there's a new one that comes. Mm -hmm. This year it's been Ebola. Now, I know it's been around, I guess, for a while, but heard a lot more about it, right? How about the uh, floods and earthquakes and all in the extreme places? <laughs> And I just heard on the news, I don't know how true this is, that uh, 2014 is the hottest year that we've ever had. I believe that. I don't know. Now you tell some of those people up there in Ohio, <laughs> waiting through that snow and freeze, now you're going to say, listen, what are you talking about? <clears throat> I don't hardly believe that, but that they say it's true, you know. Now that we're having rain, abundant rain in places, you know, and in other places there's none whatsoever. So, how should we live in the light of all that? <laughs> well, I think, you know, we should take, again, I would say to you, don't, don't go around saying, okay, you know, waiting for some sign to take place. 
you're waiting for the Lord to return, but at the same time, I think the good Lord wants us to open our eyes and see that, uh, you know, certain things are leading up to that day when the Lord Jesus Christ will come again, you know. So what should we do? How should we live? Well, let me just suggest a few things. Number one, sell out completely to the Lord Jesus Christ. And start right now. If he came today, if he came right now, would you be ready? I remember asking a, a lady that one time, and she said, well, of course not. <laughs> I said, well, are you saved? She said, yes, I'm saved. I said, well, then why aren't you ready? She said, well, you know, my husband's lost. And I don't want to go without him. Well, I had to say to her, have you been talking to him about being saved? Yes. But he doesn't want to listen. I understand that. I know that takes place, all those things. But you and I are held responsible for what we do and what we believe. You know, I love my children. I love my grandchildren and all that. But I'm not, I can't make up you know, their minds, make decisions for them. What I'm worried about is me. That if the Lord came at this very moment that I would be ready and I'd be caught up to be with Him in the air and that would be what a glorious, glorious time. Another thing I think we should do, now I don't talk, as you know, as, as a preacher very much about money. But the Lord had some things to say about it. And he said we were to lay up some treasures in heaven. Uh, most people are worried about laying up treasures here on earth. You know. <clears throat> but I think what we need to be doing is, is laying up some treasures in heaven. You know, when the Lord Jesus Christ returns in the air and we're caught up to be with him, the first thing that's going to take place, of course, will be the marriage supper of the Lamb. And then we're going to have to give an account of what we've done. You know, I don't know about you. I'm not looking forward to having a crown but, you know, the Bible talks about that. No, you have crowns and glory and all this. What have you? But I think I'd want my Lord to say, listen, over there in bank X, not Y, Z, or whatever it is, you've got a lot of treasure laid up there. How sad it'd be to have the Lord say, well, you don't have nothing. Because all your treasures back down there in, in uh, Wells Fargo. <laughs> what? <coughs> Something we need to give some serious thought to, right? And again, I say this to you. You cannot give God. Just try it. <laughs> try it and see. You know, you give it to him and he'll give it right back to you. You know. I think we should live every day of our lives with Christ coming in mind. <clears throat> thinking, you know, perhaps this may be the day. Uh, now the judgment seat of Christ follows the rapture and will all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 10 tells us that. Uh, and there, Christians will have to give an account of what they've done here. So what I'm saying to you is this. Examination day is coming. You know, it's on its way. Awards await those who have served Christ faithfully. Peter, by the way, challenges all of us because he says, everything you see shall perish. 2 Peter 3.11 In other words, Everything that we hold so dear here on this earth will go up in smoke. Now, 
Why will the Lord judge your service for him? I don't know. <clears throat> will he say this? Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Well, maybe I should put it the other way. Does your future hold rewards or regrets? So, here's the thing about it. All of us have agreed here tonight that the Lord Jesus Christ is coming. We're praying that he'll come and that he'll come quickly. Once he comes, those who have died will be caught up to be in the air with him. And those of us who remain, you, I, those who have accepted the Lord as, as our personal Savior, will be caught up and together we will be taken into glory. And what a wonderful, glorious thing that'll be. Amen. I don't know about you, but I, I, I'm i really kind of looking forward to that. It's, it's just going to be a tremendous, wonderful, glorious time. And uh, then the judgment seat of Christ, and of course, you'll have to give an account of what you've done with your life here on earth. Now, I'd have to say to you, I probably haven't done all that I could have done for my Lord. But I, I, I have just simply tried my best, and I want to continue to do that. And so if he comes tonight, I'm ready. If it's tomorrow, I'm ready. Next year, I'm ready. Whenever. Let's pray. Almighty, <clears throat> Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we don't know the day, we don't know the hour, but we do know this, that you are coming. One day, our Heavenly Father will say, Son, it's time. Go get your church. Go get your bride. And the trumpet will sound. And you'll come. And those who have died and gone on before us will be caught up out of the grave, tomb, or wherever they are. And those of us who are alive will be caught up to be with them in the air. And what a glorious, glorious day that'll be. I pray, Lord God, that every person here under the sound of my voice tonight is ready. If you came back, if you came back before we leave this building, we'd all be ready. <laughs> what a wonderful, glorious thing it would be. But we don't know. So help us, Lord God, to live for you, to serve you, to give, to be the kind of a person that you'd have us to be because we know that our only hope is in you. So forgive us, Father, where we failed you. Help us to grow stronger every day in our service for you. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. We're going